Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. The Jamoti Podcast is powered by Sideline Interactive. Sideline Interactive is the leading manufacturer for high quality, innovative scoring tables and LED video display boards that help coaches and schools bring more excitement to fans, create huge fundraising opportunities, and make their jobs easier. Visit sidelineinteractive.com to check out their amazing products. Uh, What's a rule change that you would love to see and why? Okay, so... uh... I, I saw the uh, or I, I listened to the podcast where uh, Jamin was talking about these these crazy ass rules. Uh, that that guy's ridiculous. One free throw, three. That's that's ridiculous. I uh, thought I'm it gonna, was too much too. <laughs> I know, coach. I know, coach. I'm gonna I'm gonna call him. Uh, inbounding with no whistle, ridiculous. Uh, we're not doing that. Uh, you know that's that's crazy to me. But I'm gonna call coach and tell him. I thought that was really funny. Uh, and and I do want to speed the game up too. I get it. You know, the only thing that I would say is 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 one. Obviously, we got to have a shot clock in high school. Uh, Thirty second shot clock in high school. Thanks, I mean, man. It, it doesn't make sense to not have it. They use it on every other level. Let's just start implementing it now, and let's just be done with it. Like I get it, the costs. Like that's what everybody talks about. But you like on our side for the AAU, like the seventeens play with a twenty four second shot clock. The 16s play with a 30 second shot clock. So they're getting prepared now for what they're about to walk into at the college level. Uh, so I would definitely do that. And then at the college level, I would I would drop it to 24 seconds too. It gives us more possessions. It speeds the game up a little bit more, you know, 15 seconds on a reset. You know, uh, I, I like that, you know, and then if I'm being really honest, Let's I, would go. Like, I would like to get rid of the coaching box and be able to walk my ass to half court anytime I want and not hear that, Hey coach, get back or whatever. And I get it. I get it. I get it. I honestly get well, it. And to me, it should be more of a judgment. Like who is this guy abusing this? Like is it, if you're going down to coach your guys and to be actually like, like helping your team, yeah. then what's the problem? If you're going after the other coach or the officials <laughs> that far, then yeah, you got to get back. Like maybe it's a, maybe it's a, the the coach's boxes is more of an of a consequence, not just the rule. And yeah. you know, because if you're going to half court, like, hey, we're we're in this, you know, hey, like it's late in the game, or you're giving some instruction, why not? Like, but then it, but obviously you take it too far that hey, coach, you got to get back to your box. I don't know. I like that. Yeah, I like that. I like I like stomping up the sidelines. I enjoy being the head coach and and having fun. And and I like to talk to the officials, you know, not just complaining, you know, like I talk to the officials. I know these guys, they, they, you know, they've repped us on the AAU side, like, and that's the hardest part. You know, I think that's one thing that us coaches got to do a better job of is, is valuing these guys and how hard their job is. And I know in the moment we get all riled up, but, you know, taking away the coach's box and us being able to coach our guys up into, you know, maybe half court or something, you know, as long as we're not abusing it, like you said, I think that would be cool. But you know, that's that's never going to happen. So that's just <laughs> that's wonderful thinking, man. <laughs> you can you can write a strongly letter, uh, a strongly worded letter to the NCAA to try to get that. But you know, you're right on the money with officials, though. I mean, I, I think high school coaches know at this point. I, I I don't know how many times I'm getting emails from these big chapters saying that there's a shortage, and I got to imagine that a large reason is because of coaches and fans and players just abusing. And, and you're right, like, without them, we will, it'll just be pickup. It'll just be us c- coaching and refing, and, and it won't matter. We need these guys. And majority of them love the game. They love kids and they just want to be there and be a part of it and help out. And golly, like I, I'm watching my son play select ball, and I, I I almost feel like asking my my wife, like, can we just go move and sit somewhere alone? It's just <laughs> it's just tough, man. 
Yeah, so you can say what you want. I get it. Uh, <laughs> no, so I don't have to listen to the, the <laughs> other to the parents. No, I'm not saying anything. I because again, yeah. it's like uh, maybe it helps that that we played, but uh, uh, PGC they have a great uh, little segment that we do at Point Guard College. It's about officials and officials will make seven to nine bad calls a game. Seven to nine bad calls. If you it's it's if you go into the game knowing that expecting that then what we shouldn't be surprised and it's not that they're intentionally doing that they're human and there's a lot that happens every possession that they could call and that they miss but seven to nine and if golly if parents could tally that up and then maybe start to get upset at the 10th 11th 12th that would help out a ton yeah i mean i think when you look at it you know the integrity of the game you know, I'm I'm big on on doing things the right way and and loving the game. Uh, you know, the the refs are a part of that, and so while we may not agree with everything that you know is is called right, and and a lot of times, you know, my biggest issue ha- is always just consistency. Hey, yeah. I, calling it down there and you call it down here, I'm good to go. But they're they're a part of the game, and and it's the integrity of the game. And so, you know, we, we've got to be able to reason, you know, or be reasonable about these things. And, and, and that's, you know, you see it on the sidelines, especially like more so on the AAU side. We don't see it as much in college because some of those people or players or whatever have been filtered out. Yeah. But, you know, I think it just sets a bad standard for what is realistic moving forward. You know, it's just not acceptable the higher you go up and, you know, once you know that and 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 reconcile with that, you can move forward and not worry about it. And you're you're right on the money. It's the consistency piece. I would rather. It's kind of like parenting, or if you if you're the uh, if you teach a class, it's really easy at the beginning of the year to start tough and then to ease up as the game goes or as the year goes. It's really hard to start allowing everything and then try to tighten it up as the game goes by yeah, so set, right. set those set those standards but i think that's the same for coaching too because the beginning of the season man set those high standards hold their feet to the fire you know and and have those expectations and then if you choose throughout the year to lighten up to have moments that they really appreciate and we get to enjoy but going back to officials that's that i agree that is tough Yeah, no, it is. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.